door of the cat. You're not in the <laughs> that was not. That was not a phoenix. <laughs> oh, that wasn't? No. Hey, who's around the corner? Hello, hello. This video was really one of the hardest guides I've ever made, mainly because even for someone that has been playing Ghosts of Tabor since the closed alpha, I know my way around, but knowing your way around and actually being able to transfer that into a visual map guide is much harder to do. Everyone tends to avoid or not play Silo as it is dark and dangerous in his very close quarters. Hopefully this map guide will get you to give Silo a chance and come out with some sweet loot. Luckily, big shout out to Donzilla and really everyone over on the Ghosts of Tabor wiki. If you haven't checked out the wiki, I really recommend it. I also recommend hitting the subscribe button to become part of this awesome community we have built here on YouTube based around Ghosts of Tabor and joining the Discord if you want to play with me or others from the community. A lot of the locations in Silo are not as cut and dry as the island. A lot of the connectors and tunnels with rooms simply don't have names, so I will be making up my own names for some of the middle places. Silo is broken into four sections or floors, and we will be taking them from top to bottom. Make sure to follow along with the little guy on the map and rewind and pause if you need to. Top side barracks. The top floor of Silo is the top side barracks. This is a possible spawn point for players as well. This is a somewhat decent loot spot. However, there is generally not too much action on this top floor. Sector 2 has a ton of loot and a really high chance of player activity as well as Fenix activity. Proceeding with caution through this area is a must as players and Fenix alike can pour on top of you from multiple points of entry. Off the level 2 room we have the green extract tunnels. There is some loot here as well as a chance to spawn the skull, which you can extract with and have a cool piece of bunker flare. Coming out of level two and through the tunnels on the right, you will be in a no name room. The room has some loot and a med box, but it's no longer available after the wipe but it is a middle choke point for the second floor of Silo. The kitchen and office is another possible player spawn point with a ton of loot scattered in the filing cabinets, desk drawers, and loot boxes. Watch for players spawning in this area, but generally it's somewhat safe for players to recover and take a quick break. The skylight room is the boss layer. This area has a ton of loot. However, there is a really, really strong chance that the Silo boss is present and will absolutely ruin your loot run. If you manage to take him out or he isn't at the spawn, this room is a must hit for any solo loot run. The parking garage is the most wide open space in the silo. Visibility is really good as well, so night vision will not be needed. There are some scattered fennecs in the area and like with almost any place in silo, the chances of seeing a player is pretty high. On the far end, there is an extraction and loot and on the other end takes you to storage areas on level two, which we will cover later in this video. The elevator shaft is a hidden room off the parking garage with somewhat of a jump puzzle. It's pretty easy to miss if you're new to Ghosts of Tabor. However, I think by this point that most people know of this room's existence. That being said, if you do manage to get to the elevator shaft room and get some great loot, be careful as other players will get you and you are totally trapped in that room. So the storage off the parking garage heading to the other side of the parking garage will take you to the storage rooms. These rooms have quite a bit of loot in them and there is a chance that you can spawn as a player there. Since playing the closed alpha, I have never seen a Phoenix in this area, so just watch for players, grab the loot, and get out. Dropping down to level zero, because that is how the map works, we have the ladder room. Coming out of storage, you can catch the stairs down to level zero, where there is some small loot and not really much of anything else. Heading down through the bottom of the missile silo and into the tunnels, you will eventually arrive at the boss layer in the basement. This whole bottom floor by the boss room is crawling with Phoenix and the boss does have a chance to spawn here. It's super dark, so either night vision or flashlights is recommended. However, managing to get into this room, you will have a ton of loot 
to leave with extraction which conveniently if you are lucky enough there is an extraction right next to the boss room that you can quickly get out with the goodies the level zero stairs is another unmarked location that i am now naming the level zero stairs and this is a big choke point for both players and fennex alike there is some loot there at the bottom of the stairs and heading up to the stairs will bring you to our final floor of this video level one the train tracks on level one is another possible player spawn and offers a medicine cabinet and quite a few loot boxes I've never seen Fenix on the tracks, but they are around the spawn once you get up to the level one extraction room and where the level zero stairs are. We're going to head over to the control room, though, going through a short hallway and through the missile silo, you will arrive at the control room. The control room does have some Fenix, so be cautious of that that can spawn there, as well as some loot boxes and a really cool mural of the Joker. Finishing up level one, we have the extraction rooms, which are generally hot with players and Fenix alike. There is quite a few loot boxes, both small medium and some large but just watch for players camping extraction because it is the perfect room for ratting against mega chads that is going to do it for me hopefully this guide is going to make your missile silo runs a little bit better and i'll see you in silo this time